Hello, I'm John Benderwolf with Zal Jets, and today we're going to cut some scenes. <music> RPGs have always been a genre of games that is largely focused on telling stories. One of the best ways to tell said stories is via cutscenes. Cutscenes are animated segments where control is taken away from the player to show an event that helps to drive the plot forward. You can create these segments fairly easily within RPG Maker using scripted character movement, sound effects, text boxes, and more. So let's get on over to my computer and I'll show you how. Okay guys, so we're here, we're in the dungeon, the snow temple as it were. I modified a little section here for the purposes of this tutorial so that we will force the player through here. Because what we're going to be doing uh, is we're going to be placing an event that once the player steps on that tile, control will be taken away from the player and the cutscene will commence. Now we're going to go ahead and do that. So we're in the event pane here and we will right click and click new. Now we're going to name this uh, not cust scene, cutscene one. Okay, we don't need an image because we don't want there to be anything that we can be seen. We're going to do same priority, and the trigger here is going to be player touch. You could also do an auto run one if you wanted it so that it's like as soon as they come into the map, this starts. But we aren't going to do that. We're going to do player touch. So now once the player steps on that tile, the cutscene will begin. Now the very first thing we're going to do is I want to make the player wait, and we're going to make the player wait uh, 60 seconds. No, let's go 30 seconds. Now, that's 30, or not 30 seconds, 30 frames. Uh, the games run at 60 frames per second, so 30 frames, half a second. Okay, we're going to make them wait 30 frames, and then we're going to play a sound effect. And let's play, I believe there's a scream sound effect. I'm going to turn that down so you guys don't get blown out. Perfect. And you know what? We're actually going to, because this is in stereo, we're going to pan this over to the left because we want our players to hear it from that direction because that's the direction in the game that it's going to be coming from. So click OK. And then we will make them wait another 30 frames. And we are going to do something called show a balloon icon. But first, we're actually going to play a sound effect. Because if we play the sound effect first, it will show up at the same time as the icon. I like, for mine, I like a bit of a decision one or decision two so we're gonna play the sound effect decision two and then we're gonna show balloon icon and what this basically is is it's a little symbol that appears above their head in like a text balloon like you would see in a comic um, and we're gonna do an exclamation point and we're gonna click this wait for completion now that causes, that mean, that basically just means that the event will not continue to go forward until the exclamation animation is played out. And we're going to put it over the player. We could also put it over this event, or we could put it over other, uh, other events if we really, really wanted to. And then just click OK there. And now we're going to wait another, we're going to go... My num lock isn't on. We're going to go 10 frames for that one. Really quick wait. And then we're going to do something called, where is it? Oh, um, set movement route. Now basically what this does is it allows us to move either the player or other events to get them to, it. we take control away from them and make them move. Uh, now, you can make the player do this. You can make other events do this. This is just the way that we're going to do it. And we're going to have them basically come down here to about here. And then turn and look over there. And they're going to get a question mark over their head. 
So we got to count how many moves down it's going to take. So from there to there is one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So we have to do move down seven times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they're going to move down seven times, and we're going to have them turn left. And there we go. Now we have wait for completion. Basically, so nothing else in the event is going to go forward until we waited for completion. Skip if you cannot move. That's you know pretty self-explanatory. If they run into an obstacle, they'll just skip any steps past that. Or repeat movements. Okay, so if you click that, uh, you'll have them move down, move down, move down, move down, turn left, and then as soon as they turn left, they start moving down again. That's sometimes useful if you want to have like patrolling guards or anything like this, but for the purposes of this cutscene, this isn't super, super important. So click OK. And then we're going to have them wait another 30 seconds. And then we're going to play a sound effect for that decision. And we're going to have a balloon icon appear above their head, but it's going to be a question. And we're going to have a wait for completion. And then there will be text. In this text, we're going to show our player graphic. And he is going to say, what the, let's do dot, 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 then question mark. And click OK. And then click Apply. Now, as it stands, that event works perfectly. But you'll notice that we didn't set a self-switch. So if the player who will be here at this point then just turns around and goes back, it'll send him back down and repeat the event. So we're going to end it by putting Control self switch A, turn it on, then do new event page, self switch, A is on, click apply, don't put anything in here, just click OK. So now when the player, we're going to go ahead and test this. Now the player will move. I'm not controlling anything at this point. This is completely the game. What the? And that's that. That's a very, very basic cutscene. Now what if we wanted other events to be moving around? Well, one thing we can do is create, a mo create an event just outside of the player's view. So let's call this one enemy. And then we're going to give them a graphic. We're going to make it this dude. Actually, let's go with this person. And we aren't going to put anything on there. Anything on there. What we are going to do is we're going to go in here and we're going to delete this self switch. We're going to do this. Go wait. Have them wait. 30 frames okay and then we are going to have this character go to the right one two three four five six so we're going to set movement round for the enemy event have them move right I believe it was six times one two three four five six Click OK. Uh, and then he'll be there. Wait, wait. One, two, three, four, five, six. OK. And then one, two, three. And then turn right. Oops. That's not what I wanted to do. Go ahead. I some, I'm not entirely sure if you need to do this. This is just a habit I've always done, is have them turn and look in the direction they're going to be moving. I'm not sure if that's something that you absolutely need, but I always do that. So I believe it's one, two, three. All right. One, two, three. Okay. And then they will turn right. Going to 
new wait 10 seconds have a text box appear that will be the monster and he'll be like Mwahaha. do another one just cuz Fools. And then we're going to go into battle processing, which is, I don't remember exactly, battle processing. Ha, here we go. We're going to have them fight something. Let's have them fight some slimes. Because they can. So battle processing slime. And then once that happens, then we're actually what we're actually going to do to get rid of the enemy, uh, the enemy event when this event is over is we're going to go control. Mm, actually, be control switch. It's yes, control switch, and so we're going to create a switch. It's going to be enemy one. Click apply. Click OK. So when enemy one is on, we'll go over here, we're gonna turn this off. Because we it's not a longer self switch, it's now enemy one. Okay, go into the enemy sprite. New page, switch, enemy one, click OK, click apply. So now let's just go ahead and try this out. We're gonna go, blah, 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 blah. Hear a scream, exclamation point. Walk, 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 walk. Oh, I made a mistake in that that character is there. Although maybe uh, maybe I wanted him to be there. Maybe uh, I wanted the people to be able to see him. So he's gonna kind of lumber over. You could change the music here. Have like something ominous, be like, oh, there's a bad guy coming. Fools. And then battle processing. I'm sorry if that's loud. Uh, so fight. So just, yeah. Anyways, then the event would be gone. Everything would be golden. Let's actually get rid of this just to, just for the sake of testing the whole disappearing event thing. So go, 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 go. Yeah, scream, ah, run. Okay, there's a bad guy. Who is that? He lumbers over. He looks at you, he's like, mwahaha, fools. And then the cutscene is over. So that's the very basics of cutscene creation, guys. You can play with it, you can get extravagant, you can get super complicated and have, like, movement routes and then someone talks and then there's more movement and all this sort of stuff and you can play around with more event uh more event ideas you could do stuff like gather followers uh which will cause all your all your followers to move into the same position as a party member you can take away party members so that you can then have events spawn that are those uh party members so that you can have party members interacting with each other and all sorts of different stuff yeah, it's it's exciting. Um, you can also have it play a movie. If you'd rather show an animated cutscene like the ones that I had during my stand-up section with like the Wrath of the Lich King and the DC Universe, if you just want to show an actual pre-rendered video, you can do that there. You can shake the screen, you can flash the screen, you can fade in, fade out. You can do all sorts of stuff. Just kind of play around with, for the most part, stuff on this page is super useful for cutscenes. A um, couple things here, you know, if you want, like, enemies, giants, blah, 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 although that's battle. Don't do that. If you want to run scripts, do stuff like that. Just kind of play around with stuff and record a video of your cutscene and tweet it at me. Uh, put it on my, post it to my Facebook, uh, like, page, whatever. Just send it to me. I want to see what you guys, I want to see what you guys can make. So... And with that, I must now leave you. Never fear, however, for I shall be back soon. In the next episode, we'll take a look at item creation.
You can click on this button here to go to that video. If it isn't up yet though, that button will instead take you to my channel where you can subscribe. If you want this series to continue, be sure to give this video a like so I know that it's something that you guys enjoy. If you really, really like it, you can even support me directly by becoming a patron on my Patreon page. I'm going to be making some big new changes to that soon, including new rewards and announcing exclusive content for my patrons. So click the link down below to check that out. Don't forget to subscribe guys and I will see you next time when I have to swap faces with a psychotic criminal to foil his evil plans.